Introduction to Solutions, Part 1. All right, so now let's start talking a little bit about solutions. So generally, when you talk about a solution, you're talking about a stable, homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. And remember that homogeneous means that it's uniform throughout the entire mixture. Some of the other features of solutions are that, you know, you could look at the solution and you can't differentiate the solute particles. You can't see them. They don't scatter light. And if you try to separate the mixture by filtration, it's not going to work. It can't be separated that way. So as we discuss solutions, we need a few terms. And so here are some of them. There are a few more at the end of this lecture. The, so the first one is the solute. And that is the substance that's dissolved in the other substance. Okay, so in this picture, th this would be the solute, these little particles. Now, of course, remember, we can't see them, but we can see them in my picture. The solvent is the liquid phase often. Okay, it doesn't have to be, but it's often the liquid phase. And this is the substance in which the solute is dissolved. So there's a lot more solvent than solute. And when we talk about the concentration of a solution, we're talking about how much of the solute is dissolved in solution. So it's a measurement of that amount, the amount of solute that's dissolved in solution. As I just indicated, often we think of solutions as having a liquid solvent and then something else dissolved. But solutions can be mixtures of solids, liquids, and gases. So one of the common solutions that we see is a solution of sodium chloride dissolved in water. Okay, so those are ions dissolved in water, an electrolyte, sodium chloride. There is also something called a solid solution. And this is a homogeneous mixture of two solids. And so often metals forming alloys. That's a common example of a solid solution. You can also have two or more liquids dissolved together to form a solution. So we can dissolve toluene and benzene together and form a solution. And we could also dissolve a gas in a liquid and that would also be a solution. Here is just a picture of an aqueous solution, okay? So in the first picture, we're adding sugar to water, so we're adding sucrose to water and stirring it. And you can see in the second picture, after it's dissolved, then we've formed a solution. Okay, so remember that water is an excellent solvent. The big reason is because it's polar, okay? So remember that the oxygen is more electronegative, pulls electron density toward itself, has an overall partial negative charge. That leaves the hydrogens relatively short of electron density, so they have a partial positive charge. And it is these partial charges that are attracted to each other and to ions or polar molecules in solution. All right, so solution formation. Now this is a physical process as opposed to a chemical reaction. So solutions form based on two factors. The first is a tendency toward mixing, and this is increasing entropy. We're going to talk about entropy a lot more in chapter 19. And the other factor is the match between the intermolecular forces of the solute and the solvent. So you look at the intermolecular forces for the pure solute and the pure solvent, and you can predict whether they may form a solution. All right, so let's look at a couple of cases. We're going to look at the two extremes. And so the first one is that the solvent and the solute have very different strengths and types of intermolecular forces. So for instance, if we have oil, then it mainly has dispersion forces or London forces, and water can hydrogen bond. So th these are very different intermolecular attractions. And so in the case of oil and water, no mixing occurs. So even if you shake the mixture together, it's going to phase separate. Now in the second case, this is a case where we have very similar strengths and types of intermolecular attractions. So when we talk about sodium chloride and water, for instance, so sodium chloride dissolves into ions into water, 
And so the sodium cations are positive, the chloride anions are negative, water has partially positive and partially negative parts of the molecule. And so overall, these ion dipole attractions are similar enough that a solution is formed. It's energetically favorable. Okay, so just a few more terms before we move on. And one is a saturated solution. And basically this just means that the maximum amount of solute has been dissolved in the solvent at that temperature. So the most you can get in there, all right? That's a saturated solution. An unsaturated solution means that it, the solvent hasn't dissolved the maximum amount of solute. Okay, so that one's pretty easy to think about. Supersaturated solutions are often prepared at high temperatures and then cooled. And so you're going to dissolve more solute than the solvent can hold at that higher temperature and then cool it. And these are unstable solutions. All right, so next up we're going to talk about why solutions form and the factors that affect that process.